Good morning, everyone. So first, this is intended to be an entirely practical talk. This is not a research talk. So the target audience are engineers, people who need to get stuff done as opposed to researchers. Uh, I'm Jeff Shukas. I work for VoiceBase. VoiceBase is speech analytics as an API. We do transcription, NLP, categorization, prediction, et cetera. Basically, we spend all day every day trying to extract knowledge and meaning and do predictions based on audio content, conversations. So not surprisingly, we've thought a lot about paralinguistics. Not surprising that the Cranky Geek folks asked us to, to talk about it a little bit. Got to get the definition out of the way. Uh, fancy sounding word, paralinguistics. I think it's Latin with a Greek prefix. While the word may be unfamiliar, the concept certainly is not. Paralinguistics is just how we say things as opposed to the things we say. It's everything that's left over when you strip away the words. Um, you know, when it comes to this context, the paralinguistic elements of a conversation are things like pitch, tone, inflection, and don't forget sarcasm. Sarcasm is almost entirely expressed paralinguistically. Definition out of the way, let's talk about the outline for our brief talk today. I want to walk you through our journey working on paralinguistics uh, in the form of the, our three phases, the three conclusions we came to. I'll warn you in advance, each statement I still think is true, but they all contradict each other. This was not an easy journey. And after that, I'll get into what we ended up building to make paralinguistics practical. It's the kind of things that you guys can build if you like as well. And then we'll talk about how we use paralinguistics in the real world with the goal of giving you tools that you could use. I'm not trying to sell our product here. Uh, these are all engineers. You're as likely to rebuild what I did as you are to buy it from me. Of course, you're welcome to buy it from me if you like. Uh, our starting point was this. We started with the assumption that understanding paralinguistics is critical to understanding meaning. If you don't know the paralinguistic elements, you have no idea what's going on. Does anyone really doubt that? Does anyone really doubt that understanding how things are said is important? No, but an example anyway. Imagine you've got this film noir police station and an interrogation room, and in the room are the police investigator and the suspect, the suspect illuminated with the overly bright light. But in this case, you can't hear the audio, you can just read the transcript. The transcript goes like this. The investigator says, you murdered Colonel Mustard in the library with the candlestick, and then the suspect says, I did it. Open and shut case. Investigator makes the uh, accusation, suspect makes a confession, we're done. Or, or was it, right? Did the uh, suspect say, I did it, or did he say, I did it? You know, was it, was it questioning? Basically, without knowing how they said that phrase, you have no idea what's going on. So we came to the conclusion, well, we've got to invest big in paralinguistics. We need to understand this, right? So we took our engineers, we and PhDs, we applied them for it. We imagined building these really high value paralinguistic metrics. And we asked our customers and they say, I want to track sarcasm. I want to track frustration, irritation, um, resignation. So we set out to build these high level paralinguistic metrics. We imagine graphing sarcasm over life of a call or graphing frustration. And it seemed really, really cool. Um, however, it wasn't as easy as we thought. Uh, we spent a lot of time on it, a lot of money. Um, I always got into the, I need just, I need just another 100,000 calls, another month, et cetera. It was really not easy. And while we found success, it seems every time we did, it wouldn't scale. We, we'd find success in some experiment, and we tried to generalize it, it wouldn't generalize. Um, it was really not, not very easy at all. So fast forward some number of, of, of months, I won't say how many because it's embarrassing, but we came to our second conclusion. The second conclusion was forget it, <laughs> right? It's terrible. These things are really expensive to build, really hard. You know, we're just not having all that much success when it comes to broadly practical metrics. And besides, we all know that the words said are more important than the paralinguistics anyway. I can give you a perfect paralinguistic map to a conversation, but if I don't tell you what is actually said, you have no idea what's going on. And besides, if you're really analyzing the entire conversation, the tone and sarcasm around a single phrase really doesn't matter that much. To get back to our uh, investigator example, if I'm reading the transcript, it probably goes more like this. I did it, no way, I was in the study at the time. Right? By analyzing the entire conversation, I don't need a single paralinguistic study quite so much. So we said, forget it, it's not worth it, but we did keep working on it. And eventually, we'll roll forward some number of months again, we came to our third conclusion, which is, you know what? We can make paralinguistics useful and practical in the real world, just not the way we were thinking of it. Instead of trying to focus on some very high value, very researchy metrics like sarcasm and frustration, let's look for some much lower level 
much more granular, much simpler to calculate, and more stable over time, less culturally dependent, less context dependent, paralinguistic metrics. And let's see if by rolling those up from the word level to the call level, they become stable and meaningful. And let's see if we can use them in combination with the transcript to do useful stuff. So that leads us to what we actually did to try to make paralinguistics practical. So again, instead of focusing on these high value metrics, we focused on trying to find things that are a little simpler. Um, if you stare at a word form, a waveform from audio, and you can think of a hundred, a thousand different things you can extract, and we extracted all of them. And we looked for each of these bizarre metrics that we, that we calculated, which actually worked, which actually did something for us, which were useful in the real world, which were predictive when used by data scientists to build models. And we narrowed it down to a surprisingly small number of pretty simple things. And then we looked at how we could deploy those in the product, and we came up with two outputs that we generate that are in real world useful. The one are voice features, I'll talk about what these are next, which are word level metrics designed for data scientists to consume. Another one is conversation metrics, which are call level metrics designed for, well, data engineers that need to do stuff and designed for the business who need to see stuff. So now I wanna talk about what those are. By the way, I'm sharing these because I hope you can learn from what we did, spend less time and less money than we did, and maybe steal from us. You know, one of our things at VoiceBase is we're extremely open. We share almost everything. We don't hide any data. So in that spirit of openness, I've got permission to come share this stuff. It's not our most special secret sauce, but hey, still, it is sharing, and hopefully it'll help somebody. So what you're looking at here is part of a giant voice base output. We output everything as a JSON file. Part of that output is just the transcript. Part of the transcript is what we call the words array, which is a, it's a sequence of the words that appear in the transcript. Here we're staring at one word. It's the word because. And then there's a number of paralinguistic elements. The first one, dirt simple but really important, S and E, start and end. These are the start and stop times for that word. I'll tell you in the next slide why that's really important. Um, but for now, just think of start and stop as paralinguistic elements. The next one, V, is the word level relative volume. We took the overall volume for that caller in that call. And then we look at this word and say, what, how, how much volume does this word have relative to the average? If it's higher, it gets a higher number. If it's lower, it gets a lower number. And you end up getting a zero to two. It's actually zero to n, but it's usually zero to two kind of number. And then we pick two frequencies. It's shocking it's only two. We tried three, 10, et cetera. But it turns out the two most dominant frequencies are the ones that are the most predictive in the kind of work we do. And what we look for specifically are what are the frequencies within the waveform that have the most energy skewed toward low frequencies. It turns out the low frequencies are the most predictive. So what you'll see here is two relatively low frequencies and the hertz, the frequency in hertz for that and the relative energy for that. So this is it. This is the low level metrics. Frequencies, volume, start stop time. If you're a data scientist, this is gold. If you're a business person, this looks annoying. Um, but if you roll these up, these are per word, to the call level paralinguistics, you get this. They're way more useful. This is a bunch of metrics. By the way, we share the algorithms for these, so you can go duplicate them yourself if you like. Um, I want to talk about these in groups. The first group is talk time, talk rate, and overtype metrics. These are all calculated from start and stop times. It turns out if you know the start and stop time for each word, you can look at pace, you know, how many words per minute. You can analyze silence. If you know who says what, you have the agent versus the caller. You can analyze overtalk. You can analyze you know, strange gaps and stuff. You get these great metrics just by analyzing and comparing the start and stop times of words. The next set are the style, tone, and volume metrics. Change in pitch, change in energy, change in voice dynamism. These are actually remarkably useful, and they introduce a concept we call uh, change. A lot of these metrics, if you graph them for a call, go up and down and up and down and up and down, up and down crazy little graphs in, in useless ways. However, if you take a call and you divide it into thirds, and you roll up the metrics from the first third of the call and the metrics from the last third of the call and do a ratio, they're really useful. So for example, I have a certain pace. And if you're talking, imagine again, it's a contact center and agent. If I'm talking at a certain rate during the first part of the call, and then I look at the rate of the last part of the call, if my talk rate went down, I'm probably a little calmer. If my talk rate went up, I'm probably a little frustrated. So simply rolling up start and stop times into a change in pace or a change in voice energy and a change in pitch turns out to be remarkably useful. 
And the third one, if I had more time, we'd get into it, uh, sentiment. Sentiment turns out to be best done as a combination of the words said with the paralinguistics. You can do sentiment on words alone, it's not really useful. You can do sentiment on tone alone, it's not really useful. You combine the two, it's pretty useful. But the really useful thing is change in sentiment. How does my sentiment change from the beginning to the end of the call? I won't say any more about that. This is probably another hour-long talk on these metrics. But suffice it to say, if you roll up word-level metrics into call level, they become very useful. Now, that leads to how we use paralinguistics in real life. So we do a couple things. First one is we take those word-level metrics and we hand them to the data scientists, and they become yet another feature when building predictive models. Right? Sometimes they'll be useful for a given model, sometimes they won't, you have to do the evaluation. We find that at least half the time, the word level, pitch, tone, frequency are very predictive and they help make better predictive models. And the other half, they don't. And again, we also roll them up into these call level metrics, the conversation metrics we talked about. Some of these conversation metrics are useful on an individual call. We have customers who alert when there's excessive silence um, or alert when an agent talks for a really long time, the streak time. A lot of them, however, are a bit noisy, so they're best used in aggregate, graphing over time. By looking at overtalk incidents over time, you can find those agents that are just talking over their customers too much. You can find the agents that are talking too slowly or too quickly, et cetera. So uh, aggregated metrics over time are great. But mostly what we discovered is that if you take the transcript, the actual word said, and you combine it with the paralinguistic ex elements, you get something even better than the two of those separately. I want to give you a, a, an example. I think this is my last slide. Yeah. So what I want to do here is give an example of what we call categorization. Categorization is the idea where you, a call comes in and you want to flag it. Boolean yes, Boolean no, did something occur? Typical cases are, did the agent do a proper greeting? Was an appointment made? Was this an upsell attempt? All kinds of things like anything you can imagine. Flagging and call Boolean yes, Boolean no. One of the ways we do that is AI. The other way we do it was with a query language, rule-based. This is an example of a rule-based or query-based attempt at categorization. I've got a new category I'm trying to create. The category is caller had a problem and ends the call being dissatisfied. Very, very simple. I'm trying to flag a call. Did this happen? I'm trying to flag calls where there's an unresolved problem, for example. In this case, I'm doing it with a dirt simple query. It's a horrible query. It's the worst one I've ever done. It would never work, but and it doesn't use any of the good features of the product, but it's really simple to understand. I'm going to tag the call if the caller says problem issue broken or failed in the first 30 seconds of the call. That's it. Now, in what we probably can see already is that's not going to do very well because it doesn't even attempt to get at the fact that they leave agitated. Now what I'm going to do is throw in a couple of paralinguistic elements just to show you that by sprinkling in a little bit of paralinguistics, my query all of a sudden gets a much more expressive. And here we go. Now I'm going to tag calls where the caller says one of those words and the caller's pitch went up a little bit during the call and their talk rate went up a little bit during the call and their voice energy went up, they're a little more agitated and they overtalked the agent twice. Really simple, arbitrary, but you can get the idea that none of these paralinguistic elements alone is probably worth tagging on. And even if it was worth alerting on, it doesn't give you any context. But combined with the query, you can make these query-based you know, uh, categories much, much more valuable. So that's V2 of our query. It's combining words, phrases, et cetera, with a little bit of paralinguistics. I think that's it. Yes, that's it. Um, more information, you got my email there. If you've got uh, contrary information, anything else to share, give me a ring. If you want more information on these metrics, if you want to play with them, give me a ring. Uh, if you want to just get a free developer account, go to website, sign it up. There's some docs there which go over in more detail the voice features. Um, feel free to copy them, et cetera. And I think, good, I was early. I like being early. Um, any questions? Okay. Hey, thanks, Jeff.